the stopping distance is the total distance between uh, seeing a hazard and then actually coming to a complete halt. And it's made up of two individual uh, distances, okay? First of all, we have the thinking distance, and then secondly, we have the braking distance. So the thinking distance, what is this? Well, it's the total distance that you travel between uh, observing an object and then starting to apply the brakes. This is because it takes a few milliseconds for your eyes to process information, for your brain to think about what the appropriate course of action is, and then actually send those impulses down through the nerves, okay? And this is uh, affected by several factors. It could be how fast you're going. The faster you go, uh, the, the further you're gonna travel while you react to something. Equally, you may be distracted, you may be tired, you've had something to drink or perhaps some illegal drugs. And these things here also affect your reaction times and therefore the total thinking distance. Secondly, we have the braking distance. Now this is the distance between when you apply the brakes and when you come to a complete halt. And it depends on several factors. First of all, if you're going fast, you're gonna have more kinetic energy, so you're gonna travel further. Also, uh, the condition of the brakes and the tires does make a massive difference. If these are worn out, if they're not working properly, it's gonna take a, a larger distance to stop. Equally, uh, the surface conditions do make a, a big difference, okay? If it's muddy, if it's icy, if it's wet, again, there's gonna be less friction, so it's gonna take a, a, lo a larger distance to stop. Keep watching as I explain all of this in a little bit more detail. So to summarise, your stopping distance is equal to the thinking distance plus the braking distance. Now the thinking distance from it, uh, depends on a couple of factors and it also depends upon your speed. Now the distance that you're going to travel uh, while you're thinking is equal to the velocity that you're travelling at, uh, the initial velocity u, uh, times t. So because s is equal to ut, we can say that s is proportional t. What does that mean? Well, that means if your, uh, the thinking time or your reaction time increases, then so does the distance that you're going to travel while you're traveling at that constant speed. Braking distance, again, is affected by a number of different factors. And also, of course, the speed at which you're traveling. Now, in order to slow down, um, your brakes have to do work. Now, work is equal to the force that the brakes apply times the distance uh, upon which they act. But also, um, this work is doing work against the kinetic energy that the, the car has initially. So EK is equal to a half mu squared, where again, where u is going to be the initial uh, speed of that, or the initial velocity of that, that vehicle. What we can then say is that the work done by the brakes, Fs, is equal to a half mu squared. That means if you double your initial velocity, it's going to take you four times the distance to break. Uh, and what we have here is a squared relationship, whereas with a thinking distance, we only have this sort of a linear relationship.